So now that we're close to the day with which we we'll live in infamy, um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Japanese American relations uh, between 1939 and 1941. So, Japanese American relations at this time uh, are not the greatest. Um, America were really upset at. Um, the Japanese uh, aggression towards Manchuria and actually we punished the Japanese and also because of the neutrality acts we uh, stopped selling um, materials to them because they were engaged in a war uh, um, against the Chinese so we stopped selling to them uh, prime materials that they needed and um, we also uh, punished them for um, invading Manchuria and for attacking the Chinese um, so we stopped selling them and we punished them so Japanese American relations at this time are not the greatest and on September 27 1940 the Japanese sign the tripartite, the tripartite Pact, uh, which was an agreement between Germany, Italy, and Japan, uh, the Axis powers. So they signed it in 1940, and this agreement was meant to provide mutual assistance uh, towards, Japan, towards the Japanese, the Italians, and the Germans, uh, should they suffer any attack by any nation that they were not already uh, involved in a war. Uh, so this is an escalation of the attacks and of the of of you know they're getting the Japanese getting ready to fight a war, uh, possibly against the United States. So. The United States, to this agreement, to the uh, signing of the agreement, uh, responded by uh, imposing strict guidelines that the Japanese had to follow. And so the Japanese were really, really upset about this and really, really uh, on annoyed and on edge about the situation. But nevertheless, they kept talking to us in a diplomatic way and coming and trying to come up to a uh, resolution to this conflict, to, to this diplomatic conflict that was happening between the United States and the Japanese. Uh, until December 7, 1941. So on December 7, 1941, the Japanese uh, attacked the United States uh, at Pearl Harbor, the naval base at Pearl Harbor. Um, in this attack, a lot of people died. Uh, uh, and we were caught uh, by surprise. It, it December 7th was a Sunday, and the Japanese attack was early in the morning. Uh, and the reason they had they had attacked us early in the morning was to catch us off guard. Uh, a lot of a lot of sail sail uh, uh, sailors had been out the night before on leave, so they were not ready for anything. Um, and so when when the Japanese start start attacking us, they actually uh, killed a lot of a lot of, sol a lot of um, sailors. And so uh, they actually attacked simultaneously uh, at Pearl Harbor, and they attacked uh, at the Philippines and in other bases that we had um, at the same time. And so we are caught we're caught off uh, off uh, off guard and by surprise, and we had been um, misled, misled because the Japanese are still talking to us, trying to come to an agreement uh, on, on one hand, while on the other, they are attacking us. And so because of this attack, uh, FDR was forced to go to Congress and request a declaration of war uh, against Japan and the declaration of war was on December 8th 1941 the next the next day
so this video is unavailable right now but it's on the slides so if you can go ahead and play it on your own um, I will appreciate that thank you very much so in this in this speech uh, FDR essentially says you know hey we were attacked and we were attacked by surprise um, and it was a simultaneous attack so now that we are in the war uh, FDR and Winston Churchill meet again they meet again that same month in December 1941 so they go to this conference the Arcadia conference uh, that lasts from December 1941 to January 1942 and it is in this conference that FDR and Winston Churchill decide that they're gonna have a policy of uh, Europe first what did they mean by Europe first? Uh, they meant that, yes, Winston Churchill understood that uh, FDR was at war primarily with the Japanese. And then the next day, uh, not the next day, but like two days later, the Germans declare war against the United States. And so now um, FDR is fighting on the two fronts. On one, they're fighting on the Pacific against the Japanese, and on the other hand, they're fighting against the Germans and the Italians uh, on the European front. In this conference, uh, Winston Churchill uh, recognizes that FDR has a two-front war on his hands, but requests that he prioritize uh, Europe first. In other words, we need to win in Europe, and then once we win in Europe, then um, we can go ahead and move on to the Pacific Theater, and the British will help you out there. It is at this conference as well that the FDR and Winston Churchill come to an agreement, uh, and the Declaration of the United Nations is drafted. Um, this declaration actually um, agrees to make an organization similar to the, Le the League of Nations and um, in, this, in this organization um, the members of it agreed to uphold human rights and outlined uh, a, you know, a, a set of pr principles uh, relating to achieving higher standards of living and addressing economic, social, health, and related problems and uh, having an, uh, a universal respect of human rights and fundamental freedoms for all without distinction to race, sex, language, or religion. So this is what they agreed to. And this is uh, pretty much the founding document of the United Nations as we understand it today and as we see it today, right? So the United Nations uh, has been in existence since uh, after World War II, but the founding document was actually drafted in the Arcadia Conference. Now, moving on to the war in Europe. Uh, initially, the Germans were doing really well, but the, w the war began to turn the tide in 1943 when the Allies defeat Germany and Italy in, Af in Africa. So the Italians were defeating in Africa and also the Germans. And this leads to the Italians, the Italians surrendering in September 1943. So by then the, the Italians are out. So the Italians were out. Mussolini was trying to get out of Italy and to escape. And then his, uh, some of his, some of the people that were against uh, him actually captured him and his mistress. And they tried them and executed both. They hung them. So 
So after the, the defeat and surrendering of, it, of the Italians, the Soviets then proceed to defeat the Germans in, in February 1943. So now that both sides are, um, you know, winning against the Germans and, against, and they won against Italy, they agreed to meet at the Tehran conference. And in this conference, you have the three um, leaders of the countries. You have FDR on representing the United States, Stalin representing the Soviet Union, and Winston Churchill representing the United, the, the United Kingdom, the British. They met in December 1943 in Tehran. And here they began to plan for what was gonna uh, be taking place uh, uh, about you know freeing France, liberating France, uh, and so D-Day uh, they began to uh, plan for the invasion of France uh, and liberation of France. That that's what we call D-Day, right? Operation Overlord was the tactical name of D-Day, and this uh, attack took place on June the 6th, 1944, and General Dwight D. Eisenhower was in charge of it. Now, this operation was really risky, and it was so risky and with such high stakes that Eisenhower actually had drafted two letters. One letter was supposed to go out if the attack had been a success, and the other letter was supposed to be uh, released in the case of a defeat. And in that letter, Eisenhower actually resigned to his post and to, took um, responsibility for defeat. Now, the Allies were successful in this, in this invasion. And so um, Eisenhower um, was allowed to stay uh, in place as a general, um, but it took it took a uh, um, a great deal of um, misleading the Germans uh, as to where where they were gonna be landing. The German the German um, generals thought that the place that the Allies were gonna land was they were gonna try to land in Calais which Calais would make uh, the most sense because it was the closest uh, port to um, the British. However, they actually land in uh, Normandy on, this, on June 6, 1944. And from there, they begin to fight the Germans. And by August, they have liberated Paris. Very famously, one of the local um, casualties of D-Day was actually um, uh, John John B. Alexander, uh, af after whom Alexander uh, High School is named. He actually was uh, killed uh, in the invasion of, of in the liberation of France in 1944. Um, but after the liberation of Paris in August, now that France has been liberated, now um, the French are more able to help us out and to help us fight um, the Germans, right? And the last major offensive of the war was um, in December 1944 in the Battle of the Bulge. And the Battle of the Bulge is called the Battle of the Bulge because um, the Germans kept attacking the Allied line, but the line never broke. The line actually held. The only thing that the line did was it made a little bulge. It just moved and it made a little, like, um, just moved. And so that's why it's called the Battle of the Bulge. And let me show you a little map. And as you can see, it only moves and so it makes this little, this little bulge, 
right? Uh, so that's why it's called the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, the Germans are not successful in this in this uh, offensive. And so we know that the Germans are losing because they have been losing several battles by now. And so after this, we're going to have another conference that where the Allied powers are going to meet to plan for what's going to happen in the war. So FDR, Stalin, and Churchill met in February of 1945 at the Yalta Conference. In this conference, the Allies agreed to the division of Germany after the war. So the Allies have begun to plan for how they're going to begin to tackle Germany after the war and what they're going to do. How should the, ne the Nazification process go and what they, should, what they should do? And one of the things that they agreed to do was to divide Germany into four sections that that they're gonna each control. So let me go ahead and show you a, ma a map, guys. That's the three allies. And here's a map of the division of Germany. So as you can see, each of the allies has a um, part of Germany that they control. West Germany, East Germany, um, are are divided. So France has a, a part. Uh, the French have a part, and then uh, the United States and um, uh, the Soviets have each of them a part of it. Now, in addition to this the division then um, you have that the that the, uh, the capital Berlin f actually falls under under uh, Soviet control so because of that um, Berlin itself was divided into four different uh, sect sec uh, sectors that each uh, of the allies controlled. So as you can see, uh, they agreed to divide Germany as a whole, but also uh, Berlin itself. Keep that in mind because it's going to come back. It's going to be important uh, later on. So they agreed to this in the Yalta conference. Um, so now that they, now that they have agreed to what what was gonna happen after the war to Germany, um, they are good to go. They, except that FDR actually dies. He actually su suffers a stroke and dies on April 12, 1945. And so after that, his vice president uh, succeeds him as president of the United States. Now, uh, Truman was a new vice president. He hadn't run uh, with FDR before. So he didn't know what was going on exactly as to the war and what the plans were. Keep that in mind, guys. But he is now the new president. Hitler, knowing that... Knowing that... um. um everything has been lost and that there's no way that uh, Germany can win. He actually um, commits suicide on April 30, 1945. And he commits suicide and his uh, mistress commits suicide as well. Then the day before, uh, both of them actually got married. Um, and then they both committed suicide on April 30th, 1945. Um, Hitler's mistress, Eva Braun, actually uh, took cyanide and killed herself. Hitler actually um, took cyanide and then also shot himself before the cyanide uh, had any effect. So he wanted to make sure that he actually died. He didn't want to be captured by the Soviets 
which the Soviets had already entered Berlin uh, that day. And so it was only a matter of time before the Soviets uh, got to the bunker where Hitler was hiding. So Hitler uh, commits suicide on the April 30, 1945. Uh, soon after, um, Germany finally uh, uh, agreed to terms of un unconditional surrender. And so they signed those terms on May 8, 1945. And that's the date that the Allies celebrate as VE Day, Victory in Europe Day. Uh, 